screw gauge looks something like this, something like this, you see. This is how a screw gauge looks like and if you want to measure, let us say, the diameter of a wire, what you do is you put this wire inside and then you tighten the screw and this is the thimble and you have to rotate it and then you take the reading from this side. You take the reading from this side, okay? So there is a circular scale, all right? There is a circular scale and there is this main scale, okay? So this is how it looks like, perfect. I'm sure this is looking very small so you're not able to see this properly, right? But I'm sure that you all have seen this, these instruments in your lab. So this is how a screw gauge looks like and it is going to give you even more precise measurement, probably up to three decimal places in terms of centimeters. So in a screw gauge, what all things do we have? And on what principle does this screw gauge actually work? So we are going to see a screw gauge works on the principle of a screw. So if you tighten the screw, what happens because of this rotation, there is also linear motion. Because of the rotation, once you rotate the screw, there is also a linear motion. As it sinks in, it, there is also a linear motion. So I can say that if this linear motion can be equivalently broken, because if I have completed one full rotation, if I have completed one full rotation, and the length by which the screw has moved is equal to x, then it is equivalent to, this x is equivalent to one rotation. One rotation means one full circle. One full circle means I can divide this circle into n number of divisions, right? Okay, and then what I have done, Practically is, I have also divided this length into these many divisions. Let's say I can have 100 divisions on this one. So I've divided this length into 100, 100 small divisions, right? So now if I, if I rotate this, I know what fraction of the divisions that are being rotated that is equivalent to the distance that it is moving, okay? So this is what the basic overall idea of the principle of screw gauge is based upon, all right? So what happens in this case, let's understand. So all you need is a screw, like a nut, bolt kind of a thing. And then you know that when you're, you're rotating this, it moves forward, right? So let's rotate this. If you rotate this, this moves forward. Let's make it transparent to understand because, because as you rotate this, it's moving in this direction, isn't it? As you, as you rotate this, it's moving in this direction. So I'll, I'll show you one more time, one more time. Let's see this one more time. So now if I rotate this screw, you see, there is a linear motion. There is a rotational motion which is equivalent to this linear motion, this linear motion. So this length can be divided in terms of a circle and you can have n number of divisions on the circle. You can have 200 divisions, you can have 500 divisions on this circle. And now what I have done is I have divided this entire length equivalent to all this number that is there on the circle. So you are going to get even a more precise measurement in case of a screw gauge, okay? so. If you understand this, for one complete rotation, for one complete rotation like this, the, the distance that the screw moves is called as the pitch of the screw. It's called as the pitch of the screw or pitch constant, okay? And you can see that how as we move this, you can see that how there is a linear motion. As you're rotating this, there is a linear motion. Watch closely. I want all of you to watch closely because I'm sure all of you must have used this instrument in your physics laboratories. If not, whenever you get time, go to your physics lab and try exploring this. Okay, so as we rotate this, what we get is uh, a circular motion is equivalent to this linear motion and this circular motion can be broken down into n number of divisions and that will be the divisions on the circular scale and there is also this main scale. So this is the main scale and this is your circular scale. This is the main scale and this is your circular scale. Now talking about the parts of a screw gauge, well the parts will have a stud, okay, a screw which will move forward and backward, the pitch scale or the pitch scale means nothing but the main scale, then you'll have a circular scale, then you'll have a thimble which is rotating and a ratchet by which you can rotate. So these are the, the main parts. Now the pitch is the distance between two consecutive threads. The pitch is the distance between two consecutive threads or the pitch is the distance, the linear distance that is traveled by the screw in one complete rotation. So the distance moved by the screw due to one complete rotation is also called as the pitch of the screw. How do you find the pitch of the screw? There is a very simple formula and I want all of you to note down this formula. The pitch of the screw is given by distance moved by the screw divided by number of rotations given. So let us say if I'm giving 20 rotations and the distance moved 
by the screw is equal to some one centimeter. So one centimeter is the linear distance that it moves, okay? And as you rotate this, you can see that this starts getting exposed, right? So the main scale starts getting exposed. As I move this, now everything is closed, right? As I move this, the the scale starts getting exposed. As I open it, the scale starts getting exposed, which means from here you can see what is the linear distance, right? So you can read from the main scale. Perfect. So as you read from the main scale, if I've given, let us say 20 rotations, 20 complete rotations, and it has moved by a distance of one centimeter, what will be the pitch? Well, pitch will be one centimeter divided by 20. All right, so this is how you find out the pitch, that is the amount of distance traveled or the amount of distance that is exposed on the main scale for a one complete rotation. Okay, now, Talking about the least count, the least count of the screw is defined as the distance moved by the tip of the screw when turned through one division of the circular scale. So how do you get the least count? You know how to calculate the pitch, isn't it? So pitch divided by number of circular scale divisions. And you will say, sir, how will I measure the number of circular scale division? Well, it's right over here on the instrument. It's right over there. It's, it's given over here on the instrument. This is the total number of circular divisions. So you check what is the last number on this one. Well, this is divided into 100 equal parts. So the number of divisions for this particular screw gauge is equal to 100, right? So pitch of the screw we can measure and then divide it by the total number of divisions on the circular scale that is going to give you the least count or the minimum value that you can measure on a screw gauge. Okay. So the total reading is the main scale reading plus the circular scale reading. Again, same thing, same funda, only in this case, instead of vernier scale, you have a circular scale to take care of. And again, I'll tell you how to take the reading, right? So how do you take the reading? Again, you'll check that which, where the zero is coinciding and uh, once you have rotated it, how you, how you are able to see that, right? So reading on the main scale just before zero of the circular scale. The reading on the main scale is taken as the reading on the main scale just below uh, or just before the zero of the circular scale. And the reading on the reading on the circular scale is the coinciding division of the circular scale with the baseline. So where is the baseline, my dear friends? This is the baseline. This is the baseline. So the, the division that coincides will be giving you the circular scale reading. This will give you the, the, the division that coincides with this line will give you circular scale reading. And this division will give you the main scale reading. Whatever has been exposed, that will give you the main scale reading. And whatever it coincides with the baseline, that will give you the circular scale reading, right? So circular scale reading times the least count is going to give you the final circular scale reading, okay? So there's the circular scale. So when you have got the value on the circular scale, in this case, let us say this is 75th division, which is coinciding, okay? times the least count will give you the final value of circular scale reading or CSR, okay? And the final reading is going to be main scale reading plus the circular scale reading. So main scale reading plus the circular scale reading is what is going to give you the final reading from this screw gauge, okay? So again, you'll have a zero error. So zero error again will be of two types. So if the zero of the circular scale does not coincide with the baseline at the initial condition before starting the measurement, when the spindle and the stud touch each other, so this is the stud and this is the spindle, the one that rotates. So when they're touching each other, and if the zero is not coinciding with the baseline or the zero of the circular scale, then we say that this screw gauge will have a zero error. Again, it can have a positive zero error or a negative zero error. So again, you'll have two types of zero errors, right? So types of zero errors are positive zero error and negative zero error. Positive zero error means that you have measured extra. Negative zero error means that you have measured less. So whenever you have encountered a positive zero error, you are going to subtract that from the main final reading. And whenever you encounter a negative zero error, you are going to add it, right? So this is what you do. So for positive zero error, what happens? Let's zoom in and check that what happens and how the reading looks like. So as you can see, this is the baseline, right? So this is the baseline. And as you can see, the zero of zero of the circular scale lies below the baseline, which means it is giving you a positive zero error. So you are measuring extra, okay? If the zero was over here, if the zero was over here, then it is having no zero error, okay? But if it is below, it means that you are measuring extra. So this much is the zero error. So what will be the correct reading? As you can see, this is no zero error, no zero error. 
okay this is a instrument which is having no zero error but if the zero is lying below the baseline this is the baseline this is the baseline base line so if the zero of the circular scale is lying below the baseline it means that you are having a positive zero error so you have to just count the number of coinciding division so number of coinciding division is 10 times times what value times the least count this is going to give you the value of the zero error okay this will give you the value of the zero error and if it is a positive zero error you must subtract it if it is a negative zero error of course you know that you have to add it so the correct reading is going to be reading minus positive zero error and i told you how to calculate this value of positive zero error least count times the coinciding division on the circular scale with the baseline see fundamentally if you think about both of these instrument that is the vernier calipers and the screw gauge it's not much difference but the the way you perceive it because there is just a difference of this circular scale and the screw gaze gives you even a more precise measurement because in this case now one millimeter has been divided into 100 divisions understand that one millimeter we have divided one millimeters into 100 divisions which means this is equal to 0 0.01 0 0.01 centimeters or in terms of millimeters or not not 0 0.01 but 0 0.001 centimeters correct so what we have got is up to three decimal places in terms of centimeters even more precise than vernier calipers so if a question comes up that which is a more precise instrument is it a vernier calipers or is it a screw gauge the answer is going to be a screw gauge only and talking about the negative zero error again if you see if the zero if the zero lies above the baseline you are measuring less so which means it is a negative zero error if you think about a, a zero a, a instrument having no zero error it will perfectly match with the, the the baseline right it is going to perfectly match with the baseline which means with the baseline what you see the division the number of the division will be zero it will completely coincide which means this is no zero error so this will be no zero error right no zero error but over here if it is above above the baseline as you can see it is above the baseline this will result in a negative zero error negative zero error means that what you have measured is less so you must add the negative zero error so the correct reading in this case is going to be reading plus the value of a negative zero error and how do we find this value of negative zero error well least count times the coinciding division on the circular scale with the baseline so again in this case as you can see that this it is above by 10 divisions isn't it it is above by 10 divisions correct so it is above by 10 divisions times least count will get the value of negative zero error and this has to be added this has to be added perfect